Hello friends, my name's James. And this is my 1965 Alberg 30 Sloop SV Tritea. We're on a mission to sail around the world and see as much of this beautiful planet as possible. On this season, we're working our way through New Zealand. I want to share with you all the magic that is Aotearoa. It's time to leave the slip and drive Tritea under her own power for the first time since clearing the reefs at Fiji in November. This is, I don't know what month this is, March. And yes, everything's time delayed on YouTube. <clears throat> um, I have a lot of anxiety right now. And uh, for many reasons, obviously. <laughs> the engine's rebuilt. I put a new tiller head on, which took some custom fabrication on my part. Um, and I think that's enough to be stressed about. <laughs> um, I was speaking with Sarah on the phone earlier and I was talking to her about like how nervous I was and we were trying to diagnose why that was because <laughs> I'm pretty good about being in insane situations and being kind of unfazed. And I realized the reason I'm so apprehensive right now is because I didn't rebuild the engine. Not that I'm like perfect at everything, but when I do something, I know what went into it. Even if it fails, I'm like, okay, it failed because I did this wrong. Um, so that's all I can attribute to the fact that, because there's like no real risk, right? It's like, I mean, the bummer is we're in a marina and I'm not going to have the dinghy hooked on the hip. So if something did go wrong, I would just have to, you know stop the boat from hitting other boats and uh, move forward but there's no wind there's like no traffic in the marina because it's early in the morning on a sunday so but i am feeling extremely nervous so let's get it over with And that's what I was worried about.
Yeah, I just have trouble with my transmission. You can just push me. What? Thank you. Where do you want to go? Oh. I'm just trying to push out. Yeah. Wait, not that way. What? Come on right here. Thank you. Once I get over here away from this dinghy, I'll restart the engine. Okay, you can just let it move up a little. Okay, right there. It's gonna hit my panel. Can you just hold it for a second? Thank you. Absolute nightmare.
sometimes it's good when everything you fear could go wrong goes wrong um luckily it went wrong in a different way than what i had feared i was scared that that was going to happen because the engine died the engine was fine what happened was my throttle body has a lot of corrosion it's the original one i got with the boat there's no way to break, I don't know why, but there's no way to break the throttle body apart to service the inside mechanisms. And around Fiji, the, there's like a knob you pull out to put it in neutral. That thing seized up and is impossible. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this little knob that turns, you cannot pull it out. And even if you, even if you hammer it out from the back, it doesn't go into neutral. So that throttle, position um has totally failed um you need it in neutral especially with these yanmars to start the engine because you want a starter at kind of high revs because they don't have glow plugs so the way i'm working around it and i have been for a while is i just pull the shifter cable off the back the control cable i just pull it off the back of the controls and then i can give it however many rpms i want to run the engine up to start the engine <laughs> well the problem is with all the melee and my anxiety i forgot to put the control cable back on the shifter so once i start untying the boat she started moving backwards like she was in reverse which she wasn't there was a very strong current running right now even in the marina so the current was already pulling her backwards and i was like okay and i know she wasn't in reverse because i looked at the um prop shaft coupling this morning when she was running and she wasn't spinning so she was in neutral <laughs> so i walked the boat out like i have since i bought the boat it's the only way to do it with a full keel boat because they they back up in random directions so i always walk her off the slip and push her in the right direction and then i let her coast backwards and then i give her gas and she then i drive out i've done it that way since 2017 anyone with a full kill boat will tell you backing them up in a straight line is nearly impossible um so i walked her out jumped on board ran back let her coast back i threw and the current's kind of moving i threw her in in forward to get us pointed you know once we were clear of everything she didn't go anywhere so i thought you know there was something wrong with the shifter cable down below so i was like shit and then instantly thankfully there are pilings here so i just came side on to the piling and the dock which is fine i didn't touch a boat i don't mind my boat touching those things i'm glad i didn't touch anyone else's boat so i get on the pilings and then i have a whole nother world of issues right i pretty quickly figured out that i hadn't put that cable on but then i'm pinned to the pilings with the current and a really nice sailor who was cleaning her boat she ran over to help keep me off of you know um the docks and try to she was helping me push off i'm very grateful for the good samaritan whoever you are thank you um <laughs> but it was like overcoming the current to get her out pushed out enough to get her going and then the other issue is my only good solar panel was like slamming up against the pilings and um so i'm like of course wait, well, i'm gonna break it couldn't happen to my broken solar panel but we got it done <laughs> everything else went off without a hitch <laughs> um we are anchored in there's five feet of water under the keel i've been in this anchorage a number of times so i knew it was mad shallow it'll probably get down to like two feet under the keel i have some something like i don't know nine scope out <laughs> um just because it's so shallow not that i don't need nine scope because it's shallow it's just like nine scope of five feet or whatever i guess it's nine scope of nine feet um so now that it's done i'm grateful that everything went completely absurd because it just kind of like reminds you that everything should be fine it'll be fine one way or another i don't have any ego about looking like a fool so that's not a problem but uh it'll all be fine
So the last part of this video needs a little explanation. Um, I wasn't filming between the time of me moving out to the Anchorage and when this next footage starts. Um, I The idea for me was like, I left Opua and went to the town of Russell and I was popping back, back and forth between there and Paihia. I wanted to spend like a week or so running the engine, you know, driving it around a little bit just to get a feel for it while I was close to the shop to make sure everything was fine and dandy. <clears throat> um, the only clip I have is this first clip from when everything kind of went sideways. Um, and then after that, that's what the rest of the footage is. So between what you just saw of me anchoring after the silliness with the docking, um, and this next clip, I had popped around. I went to Russell, um, and then I think Paihia, and then back to Russell, which they're like a mile apart. And it was all really close to Paihia. So I was trying to just do like little runs and run the motor and like really kind of feel it out before I got too far afield from the mechanic. This next clip is like a vertical clip that I just shot for Instagram, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and include it because it shows the moment when things got silly. The engine is seized. <laughs> it's literally seized. Compression levers are on. It was like the third or fourth start attempt. I was doing little starts, you know, the way you do to build up compression. It was a not a fun sound. And it went, ah! And then... Okay, so the only thing I'm going to do to try to assess what's happening with the engine is um, last night when I was getting ready for bed, I thought maybe the starter misfired and it's jammed with the flywheel. Now, in the best case scenario, if that's what's happening, I'll pull the starter off, it'll suck back into the starter, and everything will be fine. Worst case scenario, if that's the situation, is it may have damaged the flywheel. Um Brand new starter, $500 starter um, that also came from the same mechanic. So this is the only thing I'm going to do to assess what's happening with the engine because I paid them so much they're going to have to sort it out. If it's not this, you know. So hopefully if anything's damaged, it's just the new starter and they can replace that. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the starter off and see what's happening. Okay, so craziest, craziest shit ever. The starter just exploded into the flywheel, but it seems like it stayed in one piece, but check this out. This is a brand new $500 starter. Here's the, here's what exploded on it. You see? But it looks like all the pieces, oh yeah, all the pieces are here. This piece was preventing the flywheel, blocking the flywheel so I couldn't turn. The engine turns freely now. It doesn't look like there's any damage to the teeth. Um, I'm going to slowly turn the engine over and look at the flywheel now to make sure that there's no teeth damaged. But this is a brand new starter. How insane is that? It just exploded. I've never seen anything like it. And like, it's like so crazy. Um, wild. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at this, but that's good news for us. If that's all that's got to be replaced is the new starter, which I might be stuck here for however long it takes for them to get a new starter, but. <laughs> in the end, after all was said and done, they got me a starter replacement. They actually were able to repair my original starter that I had rebuilt in Fiji and then it failed again, but there was like just a loose bit of solder. They ended up, Barry at JMB was able to fix that starter in like 15 minutes. That thing's built like a Sherman tank. So I just reinstalled the original starter. Um, and then got my replacement from them, wrapped it up in a rag, <laughs> covered in WD-40 to prevent rust, and put it in a plastic bag and stowed it. So now I have a spare brand new starter as well. But I was really shocked that that starter exploded. And then a number of people online had said, that's like a common problem now, especially with like crappy Chinese starters. And it seems like it's hard to find a quality starter these days. 
and you can find tons of images of that exact same thing, that cone exploding on Amazon. You can see tons of them. So, words the wise. So, that sort of sums up the engine saga that went on for a very long time. The next episodes from here on out is me actually getting to cruise and see a lot of New Zealand. So I hope you guys are ready to see some beautiful places and um, make our way down from the Bay of Islands to the Horaki Gulf. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.